Happy rainy Monday to everybody out there. Renee, you're going to have to confirm what I'm seeing, but I'm seeing that Kim is first in the chat on this rainy Monday morning. Welcome into the PHLY Phillies podcast. As always, Jamie Lynch, Renee Washington, Tyler Zuli, and the man in the black and white PHLY hoodie, John Foley, joins us in studio <laughs> this Monday. Hello to everyone, and this show is brought to you by Factor Meal Kits. Today's is brought to you by Factor. Use code PHILLIES50 to get 50% off your fat first Factor box and wellness shots for life with any active subscription. Go to factormeals.com slash phillies50. All right, we have real baseball to talk about. Oh, that yeah. was fun. Uh, I know it wasn't the ideal outcome and results, but it was really good theater. I was on the edge of my seat looking forward to every game each day. Uh, we'll get into the nitty gritty of the weekend that was. But it was just great to have him back. I cannot lie. I know. Let me start things off with the chat clarification because I needed a moment. <laughs> it was Ray. Okay. Ray was first. Slem was second. But Jay, Kim, nice to have all you here as well. It is great because we do officially have baseball to talk about. We've got games. And got to be careful what you wish for. We were like... We're looking forward to just having Phillies baseball back so we can talk about real games and meaningful conversation. And we got it, guys. We got it. But I'm glad that at least Ranger with the save, Phillies get game number three. Uh, day three was better. Yeah, we, we salvaged one. You know, it wasn't the start that everybody wanted, but it was incredible theater. I mean, Buzz. to have the Phillies and Braves, it felt like a playoff atmosphere already. A little chilly. Phillies and Braves going at it. Um you know, game the first game was a tough one. I'm sure we'll get into it. The, the second, you know, uh, they got that one. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, the, the third game behind Ranger, uh, you know, they they battled and, and they came away with one. So it's not a complete disaster to, to start the season. Yeah, look, exactly. the, the, uh, the, the silver lining from the weekend is there is a world of difference in being one game back of the Braves and three games back of the Braves. Mm -hmm. uh, that's nightmare scenario. Because the Braves are awesome. Uh, Ozzy Albies is tremendous and somehow like like the third or fourth best Brave when people talk I about know. them. Uh, he gets left off top second baseman list and the guy's just a Phillies killer. Um, you know, they lose Murphy on Friday with the oblique, so he's down for a little bit. But that team is nasty. And if you start the season down three games to them, you just, you just shot yourself in the foot. They're, they're nasty. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, you know, a dogfight to the end. And, yeah, to, to just spot them three games would have been a nightmare. Yeah. Like we got one. And you talk about Albies. I mean, this guy comes out two games in a row with a first inning home run. But mm -hmm. <laughs> he goes down 2 nothing. Yeah. I, I think, mean. I think one of the biggest things, though, that I also take away, series results aside, is, I'm, I'm fine with starting off the season, you know, with an incredibly tough series against the Braves versus you. There's no easy team in, in Major League Baseball. There's no easy team in professional sports. But this is the team that you're competing for the NL East against. This is a team yeah. that is is the one that you're, you have to, you know, them much like the Dodgers, but definitely the Braves, you're keeping an eye on all season. So to start off right away with that immediate test and as frustrating as it was Friday and Saturday to see the, you know, the amount of runs that the Phillies gave up, at least you start off against a team that, as we've talked about, has World Series, you know, possibilities. And as I was looking back at last year, because this weekend's uh, games did make some history in all the wrong ways, with the minus 14 run differential this in the first two games, that was second all time for the Phillies' worst run differential to two games Sweet. since 1901. And the number one is last year's opening weekend loss Rangers. when they got swept to the Rangers, yeah. who, of course... <laughs> well, no, I don't know. Win the World Series. They got swept and they were minus 17 in the first two games of that one. This year, minus 14 against the Braves. I'm not saying that they always are going to start off the season losing to a World Series title winning team, but this is a World Series caliber team. 
Uh, so it's an early test. Now let's just hope that the rest changes. Yeah, later, the though. Braves. Uh, <laughs> the Braves continue to win the first half of baseball seasons. That's great. Uh, yeah. We'll see yeah, you in October. Perfect. Yeah, see you in October. Let's, yeah, let's um, see how the last games go. So, John, <laughs> you were down there all weekend covering every game. And Darth Poo, shout out to Darth Poo in the comment section. Uh, he's already coming for Topper's throat. I love oh, to see man. that passion. Irrational. Uh, I like it already. I, I threw on sports radio this morning because I was like. All right, let me hear the overreactions. And sure enough, on WIP, you know, whatever their message line was, uh, Rob Thompson makes no sense. This bullpen is the same trash bullpen it's always been. Castiano stinks. Send him out of town. Johan Rojas can't hit. Uh, Everything's a disaster. Everything's falling apart. Uh, So let's get into some of, I guess, the perceived uh mismanagement of topper in the bullpen yeah now the one i completely 100 percent agree with was leaving aaron nola in on saturday mm. um because your bullpen got worked on friday night and yep. you knew you were going to need them first series of the weekend guys you know zach wheeler was spectacular they're not going to go past 90 pitches max they're probably in that 75 to 85 range so you knew that you couldn't tax your entire bullpen so i was okay with leaving nola in if you tell me you have a problem going to Strom or Alvarado on Saturday or Friday, what's the solution there? Right. So, John, you were there firsthand. You saw it. I, there's probably chatter in the press box a little bit. What did you think? I didn't have a major problem for an opening weekend with anything you did. I, I did not either. I, I mean, first of all, it, yeah, if you talk about leaving Nola in, that was just Nola taking his lumps yeah. to preserve. They knew that game was sort of lost. They yeah. preserved the bullpen for, for Sunday, and it worked out because you needed on them. Sunday you had your guys. So th- that move made sense. Now, overall, do I agree with every decision that Topper makes? <laughs> no. No. N- yeah. Nobody is, and none of us are. And we'll get into the Stott Marsh thing in a second. Yeah. But, but just bullpen-wise, like, yeah. did you have any major, like, no, no spidey, major spidey no, senses going off. No major gripes. I did feel on Sunday when I saw the lineup, just like everybody else, I had the same gripes. It's like kind of a like, gross lineup. Where's the sense of urgency? Yeah, you lost the first two games, so we really want to go after this one. So, you know, I was second guessing him there. But I think what Topper brings to the team, and I, I don't. This gets lost in the conversation about individual moves and on individual days, is just that sense of consistency and even keel, and everything's going to be okay. We lost the first two games. He didn't mm-hmm. scratch everybody's scheduled off day and say, now you're going to play because we're panicking in game three of 162. He stays even keel, and it's it's frustrating. It's very frustrating for fans to watch this and, and say, you know, come on, we really need to but win. But the inverse three. is yeah. the players love him for it. Inverse is the players love him for it. And it reminds right. me a little bit of a Andy Reid's time with the Eagles, right, where it's yeah. just like no matter what happened, he's calm. He's not going in there screaming and yelling at anybody. It's, you know. And blah blah blah. Times yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's the same. It's the same vibe with with Rob Thompson that he's going to be the same guy no matter what. Whether yeah, they just lost by ten or one by ten. Renee Darth Poo saying, you know, the decision to pull, and that's one I disagreed with. Uh, the decision Jeff Hoffman was great, and they pulled him to play the matchups there, yeah. and that's that seems to be the one that most people are bitching about. Yeah, I mean, I going back to Nola first of all for the seventh time in his career, giving up seven runs. I know the one it was deemed an earned run. Um, but overall, this is why, as much as people may get frustrated with Rob Thompson, this is why, as you mentioned, the guys do love him, but also he allows the team to stay very even keel. It is still, Mm -hmm. it's still opening weekend, very frustrating start. Don't get me wrong. Nobody had this on our bingo card that, you know, the first two games, the Phillies were going to go and be a minus 14, but overall it is still only the first weekend and like we just i know i brought up the sweep last year against the rangers how many people really remember that i mean yes it's it's still you know it's frustrating you don't ever want to lose a series at all let alone the one that to start off your season and the concern is is this how we're setting the tone for the remainder of the season but i think what's worse is to hit the panic button so soon and sunday's lineup i know again we'll get there um that and in a in a you know, smaller scale was people feeling like Rob and the Phillies were hitting the panic button, but I think it was actually the opposite. I think it was between the moves in in the bullpen, it was kind of understanding the long-term bigger picture, just like Sunday's lineup was of understanding, okay, you know what? It is still early. This, we don't want to overdo it with anybody. We don't want to put too many eggs in one basket. As you guys know, I'm all for giving guys a chance. So a game like Sunday, it's game three of the weekend, not a good first to start why not give somebody else a chance? You know, why not see maybe somebody else can give us a little bit more? And that's exactly what we got. That's what we actually got. Although people wanted Bryson Stott in the lineup, 
everybody was concerned, of course, because of Bryce Harper's fall. Um, no, we'll but at the end that. of the day, you have to give these guys early on in the season, the mm -hmm. Sosas, the Paches, even Johan Rojas, we'll as many opportunities. You've got to give them chances to, sit, to, to at least try to see what they can do because you don't want to write guys off too soon. And now you're stuck into this rotation of the same nine or ten guys. And here we go, summer, now early fall, you have nobody else to turn to. Yeah, that's exactly right. And Thompson said it to uh, to the media post game mm -hmm. on Sunday that, you know, he wants to get guys involved. Got to keep mean, them fresh. It's the beginning of the season. Everyone's excited. You've got these guys on the bench. They they want to get in the game. They want to feel like part of the team. He said, you know, once you get in the flow of the regular season, mm -hmm. it gets kind of hard to find the, the, the spots. And for keeping to guys fresh is not just about the Bryce Harpers, Trey Turner, Kyle Schwarbers staying fresh. It's also that next tier of guys that, you know, Witt, Merrifield, and, you know, Sosa and Pache and these guys, keeping them keeping them locked in, too, because you don't know if you're going to need them. And you want to make sure they're staying engaged, that at any moment, if their name's called on, they'll be ready to, to step in and, and give you good innings. So whether it's the bullpen or, you know, guys that giving you good at bats, you need to keep guys fresh and locked in instead of having them feel like, you know, they, they can't contribute in any way because all they're doing is sitting in the dugout day in and day out. Right. And on Sunday, uh, they had an inning where... Sosa, Pache, and Rojas, seven, eight, nine hitters loaded the bases with no mm -hmm. outs. And that's where we're rounding into a double play. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it, uh, it theoretically Lord. worked out. All right, so the decision yesterday. A lot in the Look, chat going on. Uh, Chris Sale is one of the best. Uh, I mean, the guy has, like, the best K rate per nine uh, in baseball history. Yeah. And he's a left-hander, and he's got that deceiving kind of sidewind. It's very huff, tough for left-handed batters uh, to pick up his pitches. The decision to sit Stott and Marsh, I 100% agree with the decision to sit Marsh. Do I love having Christian Pache and Johan Rojas in the same lineup? Not really. I'm not going to lie to you there. I'd prefer that to be Witt, but Bryce had this scheduled off day, so Boehm slides over to first, yada, yada, yada. Um, I disagree with sitting Stott there. Now, it could have been a scheduled day off. It could be him playing the matchups. Yeah. To me, shot Stott showed you enough last year versus left-handed hitters. Um, I think they're selective with what lefties he faces mm -hmm. uh, so that he can build that confidence and get good at it. And I think he did that last year. I get it, but I would have just sat Marsh and played Stott yeah. personally if I was managing yesterday. What were your guys' interpretations? I'll let you go first. Yeah, it, it feels like it's time to set Stott loose, right? Yeah, like you said, yeah. He's, totally. You know, he's, he's been here a couple oh, of years God. now. And I, I understand the idea of trying to protect him against the toughest left-handers and, you know, make his left-handed bat – is that at bats against left handers against somebody who's not Count, yeah. mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's earned the right to be an everyday player. And yeah. it's disappointing not seeing one before. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I think when you go to managing your players, this is the one thing I do disagree with the decision on you. Can, it's not one blanket, uh, you know, across the board management for everyone. So Bryce Harper, who's, you know, further in his career, a lot more miles in his tank, Managing him is different than Bryson Stott. Right. So I actually understood, you know, even without the fall, if Bryce Harper was going to get a day off day three. I know people are like, oh, you want a contract extension, but you need you need a day off two, after two games. It's a long season. He also has been dealing with back soreness. He all, you know, this, that, and a third. But Bryson Stott is not Bryce Harper. And so I do feel like what you want to get from Bryson Stott is you want to pull more out of him in this early part of the season. So I do feel like he, sh he should have played. He doesn't need a day off yet. Yeah. If anything, it's the opposite. Let's get him going. Let's get him confident. You know, guys like him and Trey especially are two of the guys that jump out at me. You want to get them out of their own head, just playing, just locked in, and consistent and steady. I think the only reason Brandon Marsh somewhat gives me um, a question mark about his off day is the fact that you want to show him that you believe that he can be an everyday player, an everyday starter, and then to have him out is like, what do you, what, that's a mixed signal, you know? So I think it just, for me, it's all mental. It's actually nothing to do with first stop or Marsh, their actual play itself. It's mental of wanting to get them understanding and instilling. You are, we, we have faith in you, Bryson Stott. We want to get the best out of you. We want to get you going early. Well, I think the fact that they're the facing start. a lefty tonight is probably right. what overruled that decision. It was like, all right, let's give him off versus sale because he's fucking filthy when he's on. Let's have him face Abbott tonight, yeah. and maybe they can build that confidence there. That's probably what the thinking is. Uh, you know, it's it's a full series week ahead, you know. Um, but I, like, Stott, to me, okay, I get Sale. He's going to face Abbott tonight. He's earned the opportunity to face some better lefties. Um, mm -hmm. But to everybody else, it's the beginning of the year. 
You don't want to kill guys. You have a whole week ahead. Hey, they, First they, time all year. Want. And they won. Yeah, and they won. Yeah, so that, it ended up working. So Rob Thompson picked us all up and <laughs> exactly. smacked us around. Once again, once again, another yeah. time where we were, you know, many people, as soon as the lineup dropped, we're panicking. And, oh, no, is this the waving of the white flag? Is this, you know, uh, Rob Thompson and the Phillies giving up and just ready to get swept by the Braves? And go figure. The Phillies actually turned around and won. And that surprised many people uh, because it snuck up on people that they actually got the win and pulled out the victory and did not drop the weekend completely lost. So April Fool's joke on you guys. But you know what's not a joke, guys? Being able to take care of your gut and your digestive health. And Olipop allows you to do just that. Olipop is the world's first functional soda with a classic taste and benefits of plant-based fiber. Now, over with our friends at Olipop, they've got prebiotics, not probiotics. They also have other botanical ingredients to help support your gut health because did you know, Two in three people deal with digestive issues. So for the three of us sitting here, two of us are dealing with some gut health issues. Are you raising your hand? <laughs> Me too. I mean, I definitely and so got Olipop, gut I think it's all three of us, actually. Olipop helps you focus on making sure... I ate like 18 deviled eggs yesterday. Can that tackle, can't be good for my gut. You can tackle those issues, and it also tastes very delicious. And that's a great part of it as well. So with Olipop, you get so many different flavors. They also provide you with... So you now have a chance to drink... Cream soda, strawberry vanilla, orange squeeze, classic root beer, classic Tyler's grape. Tyler's drinking a grape over cola. there. Already? Tyler's got his Olipop. Yeah, always. Big grape And guy. with Olipop, uh, with the great flavors, you also have great options of where to purchase Olipop. So Olipop is available in 30,000 stores across the country where you can find them. Wawa. They just launched in Wawa. That's right. Everybody that's got a Wawa nearby like we do, go get some Olipop off the shelves at Wawa. Target, Sprouts. Wegman, ShopRite, GoPuff. They're also sold online at drinkolipop.com as well as Amazon. And today when you use the code PHLY20, get 20% off of your Olipop order. This discount does only apply to one-time orders, not to subscription orders. But again, use that code PHLY20 for 20% off your next Olipop order and get your gut feeling good. Functional ingredients that they have combine the prebiotics, the plant fiber, the botanicals to help you feel good because 90% of Americans are consuming more than the USDA's daily recommended added sugar intake. And with Olipop, they've got less sugar, but more digestive benefits for your guts. Feel good, guys. Feel yeah, good. Uh, Matt Deckard, you ain't kidding. And K-Red, <laughs> uh, yes, I would guess Ew. also Renee has the healthiest gut of the show here. Uh, well, she has a sweet tooth, so I'm not going to speak. Yeah, for, I don't know, actually. But I eat like a trash can, so uh, definitely not me. Uh, but let me tell you about my friends over at Bet Parks because we're so excited to be teaming up with Bet Parks. I've worked with them in the past. I've been using them for a while. Bet Parks is great. Make sure you download the Bet Parks app uh, because it's got all your needs. You can get in the zone with the Bet Parks Sportsbook. Money in the moments. What events are coming up? You know? They're going to say that the women's game tonight between Clayton Clark and LSU might be the second highest viewed sporting event of the year, only behind the Super Bowl tonight. So that's a big one tonight at 715. The Phillies are, are of course, back in action. Uh, you can win big when you play all day action. Win your first $10 bet and earn $125 in sports bonus bets. You play for fun. You love to win. Uh, and the Bet Parks app is great. Right now, I'm looking at uh, they already cooked up one of the same game parlays for tonight's game, plus 1500 odds. Phillies money line under eight and a half uh, odd total runs and over four and a half runs by the Phils. Uh, so ten dollars there wins you 150. Uh, the Phillies are a minus 157 favorite tonight with Christopher Sanchez versus Abbott. So make sure you're staying up to the date with the Bet Park Sportsbook. Download the app. And play along with us. Must be 21 or older. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Uh, before we get into the nitty-gritty of tonight's games, uh, I'm going to need Bryce Harper. Uh, I love the heart. I love <laughs> the hustle. It's hard to take that away from a player. Uh, and I don't want it to be gone. Got to play but, smarter. Yeah. yeah. You got to play smarter. Oh, that you don't like him Flying over the rails into the um, dugout. My heart palpitations. That uh, I did not awful. enjoy. Uh, that was really kind of an uncatchable ball there. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't even close. Yeah, no, <laughs> was not even like, close. Where was he going? <laughs> like second game of the year, dude. There's 159 more games. We need you. Without you, this is all pointless. 
So I love the hustle. Please try to play with that hustle a little bit smarter. Yeah. Oh, let's be smart and hustle Please. in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button while you're here. Landry215, nice to have you here. Randy, Matt Decker, Darth Pooh, Barbara, Christy, thank you for the congratulations. I appreciate appreciate it. Dave Kim, P, it's low Randy. because it's the camera thing. So they're all up on the railing taking the pictures at field level. That's yeah, why so it's hit that thumbs up button while you're here. Spiral out. Jason, what's up? Jason, nice to have you here as well. Keep letting us know your thoughts. I know the chat's rolling with their thoughts on the weekend. But my thought on that part of the weekend Please was exactly that. Like <laughs> it was, But it was, is it a moment where it's worth showing everybody this is why Philly... This is why you love me. I'm going to go diving <laughs> into the dugout to try to catch this ball. This is why I, you know, I'm the heart and soul of the city. No, no, we didn't need you to do all that. We, we got we, it. You know, we saw we saw you pregame with with Jason and with uh, our buddy Fletcher, our colleague. We saw you, you know, you always had the jacket with all the Phillies merch, the cleats. Like, we get it. We totally get it. But also, Bryce, I agree. It's just... It just Gave being me a heart smarter. attack. Dude. We just don't need this right it now. Was, You've got a baby on the way. Like it's so early. It's okay in the to season. call it a dumb it's play. Okay. You're not yeah. calling Bryce Harper dumb. Yeah, that was a dumb play. It was a dumb play. It was over. It was. It was very much over the top. We didn't need all the extra. <laughs> it was very theatrical as Absolutely. the weekend was. <laughs> I mean, the entire weekend was theatrical. Yes, and that was a part of it. And you know, they asked they asked Thompson about it after the game. Um, and they said, you know, are you going to have a conversation with Bryce? And <laughs> and he was like, well. Sure, but it's Bryce. That's, yeah. that's what he exactly. is. That's how he plays. Exactly we have to live right. with this. It's very hard. I mean, that's just his instincts to go after that ball. like a Which you love. You're Which not you in love. the outfield Which of the wall, love, Bryce. But, but you need to become, you need to mix <laughs> Charlie Hustle with a little bit of Mensa and meet in the yeah, middle. Yeah, but yeah, just you know? remember, you're no longer in the outfield with a nice tall wall. Right, you're right, now right. at first base <laughs> where everything, as you're jumping and elevating, it's not going to catch you. I guarantee you're going to raise that railing, by the way. <laughs> you think the I Bryce think, Harper effect? That's the <laughs> I think I think once Bryce goes over a railing, I think they raise the railing. I mean, he's been playing first for what, like sixty-five games, <laughs> yeah, and we've yeah. already seen him launch himself twice. over the railing <laughs> yeah. twice. Yeah, like we love you, Bryce, but we need please you. stop. So please don't stop. kill yourself out there. All right, uh, let's go through the pitchers this weekend. Uh, Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola, oh. Ranger Suarez. He's so adorable. Zach Wheeler, spectacular. What yeah. else is there to say? Yeah. One of the best pitchers Great in baseball. It sucks to see, uh, you know, a bullpen blow a game like that. Strom wasn't good. Sir Anthony wasn't good. Alvarado wasn't good. It's just one of those days I chalked yeah. it up not to, this bullpen sucks and everything's yeah. over. I just chalked it up to, they all had a bad day collectively. What are you yeah, going to do? It was weird. It was just weird as day one, these things happened. Uh, Friday was definitely a more frustrating game than Saturday. Sure. Just because Wheeler out to... Out to old Strider. Yeah. yeah. You had the two nothing lead. That's a great point. In comes the best, the best bullpen in baseball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you, Major League Baseball, for that. Right, right, right. <laughs> and then they lose it. So, you know, uh, Saturday, just a regular old blowout. And I, was a problem. Easier to I deal do with. feel yeah. like it was a lot easier to digest uh, Saturday's loss because it was from the jump. Aaron Nola mm -hmm. struggled from the jump. You're down early um, to give up seven runs so quickly. It's like, oh, okay, this is this is where we're at. Uh, but Friday was, you know, we were even as we were talking about in our pregame show, and the weather's nice. We pushed back opening day. Everybody's out and about. The crowd was feeling it after Brandon Marsh helped. You know, he you get two runs, you're up to well, you're Opposite feeling field. good. That was great to that see. Was that was beautiful, and everybody's excited. Citizens Bank Park was rocking, and then it's like deviled egg. It's like you had too many deviled eggs, and everything went flat. And <laughs> I had a lot like, of those. Yes, <laughs> everything went downhill from there. It just was. It caught us all by surprise. And then by Saturday, it was kind of like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. So this Nola... Is how, this is how the season's just going to yeah. start. Nola just didn't have it. It was one of those days you could tell early. His breaking balls didn't have the same, like, drop yeah. to him. Uh, mm -hmm. He wasn't placing his fastball as well as he does on the outside of the zone very often. He just didn't seem to have the... It was just one of those days, again, I went... All right, I don't think this is indicative of what we're going to get this season. I think this is a first start, just didn't have it type of day. Love and it. again, these are um, sadly some historic numbers that we're seeing from the first two days alone in all the wrong ways. We talked about like the nine runs given up on Friday was a first that happened since like March of 2023. The seven runs that Nola gave up was a first, you know, in such a long time, just seven times in his career. And unfortunately for Zach Wheeler, who pitched so well on Friday, we forget it because everything else kind of, you know, uh, just blocks it out at this point with all the other frustrating things we saw. No, it's the opposite, you know, but, but it's understandable. It is something where it's like, 
like we said after Friday's game, maybe get this out of your system. Maybe this is some yeah. new dad struggle too. Maybe he's not sleeping as well, and Very. he just had a baby like a little over a week ago. Very I'm possible. gonna blame it on some of that. Yeah, let's blame but, it on the baby. Yeah, let's blame yeah. it on the baby. <laughs> Save, it always <laughs> saves the blame it on the baby. But, little know, Scotty, was it a little Scotty Harper <laughs> or Scotty Board? Scotty Nola. <laughs> but in all in all fairness, to Nola, he he wasn't his best. He also got pretty unlucky if you look at some he of the did. numbers on like the at the Albies yeah, home run would have only been a home run in two ballparks, right. Citizens Bank so, and Yankee Stadium. So to be bad and unlucky, <laughs> as Tyler <laughs> said before the show, <laughs> like ball don't lie. Uh, JTs would have been a home run in like so many parks, but yeah. not Citizens yeah. Bank. Exactly. There was a couple of those unfortunate, just like baseball incidents right. it's that like happened. Every, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Right, and if you're going up against like, the Braves. Just, you, know, oh, you can't get the bad luck on your toast. You can't catch the bad breaks also. Yeah, your toast. Yeah. So. Um, all right. A couple other news and notes from the weekend that I have written down. Uh, look, Johan Rojas uh, is looking a little overmatched at the plate. But let me say this. His speed won you that game yesterday. Yes, it did. Uh, a lot of guys, that's going to be a play at the plate uh, with the, the go-ahead run. And then the double play that he was safe at first. When I watched it live, I went, ah, oh, shit, he's out. Yeah. And then they did the replay, and he got in there by like a toe. His yeah. speed really came into play yesterday, and this is why they had him focusing on bunning so much in the spring. Um, I don't know if his launch angle is ever going to be a thing, but maybe, you know, like the uh, Justin Crawford kind of hitting down on the ball and mm -hmm. just trying to put the ball in play and using that speed to his advantage. Uh, I thought his speed was you know, the reason you won yesterday. It was and, and the Nick Cassiano's it was, it was, blown call. Right. <laughs> but those two things. <laughs> Take what you can get. Take what you can get. It was, though, and it was a play that there are a lot of guys that would have been out. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of guys that w don't have the speed. And you, it was, in real time, it seemed like he was out. You watch it, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> and you watch it back. Wow. Tyler's chiming just in. Ads, ads are getting ever more just, intrusive. I was just trying to look at a box score. I was literally on ESPN looking at the ad. Royals ESPN box score. ESPN is, well, oh, it's horrible. You know what's weird about it's that, horrible. actually? In the chat, I know K-Red, Jim, uh, different people are talking about ads. And then you just randomly just... Have an ad that pops up. It's like the internet could hear. I'm always listening. The chat. The ESPN is listening. owned by the mouse. It's yes. like they don't need pop-up ads are that are that intrusive. You guys are literally in the chat talking about ESPN the ads sucks. in the outfield. It's like you're creepy uh, when you're talking about something, and then you and get an Siri ad on your phone talk. later. Oh, yeah, oh, it's, it's let weird. Let me not say that too loud because she'll chime in too at the heartbeat. <laughs> but it is wild. Um, not only that you're playing, that the ads are being heard from the chat, um, but also the fact I don't even know what I was saying at this point. Now the ad threw me off. Uh, Rojas. Oh, Rojas. Thank you. Thank you. Yoro. That's why I forgot Yoro. it. I wasn't saying his name. Yoro made a play that others would not. And the only thing that I will say for everybody that's ready to just dump on Yoro because he did look lost at times, he's not the only one that looked lost this weekend. There oh, not you oh, too. God, oh, man. oh my gosh. <laughs> that Popeyes one was that loud. Yoro wasn't the only one that looked lost this weekend. There were a lot of Phillies that struggled. And when we were even talking on the other side, trying to find guys that you can take the positives from uh, Friday and Saturday, especially wasn't that money. So I'm not going to say like Yoro just did awful because the Phillies didn't play well either. So that's the only way I can justify it. <laughs> right. It, it goes back to what they said about Yoro the entire, the entire idea of spring training, which is if, if your number nine hitter not hitting well is the problem, you have bigger problems. Sure. Correct. And they the were bigger problems. To hit, and he's going to do, he's going to do his job. His job is to play great defense, uh -huh. flash that speed like he did on, in Sunday's win. And came into play uh, twice in really big spots. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And as you said, Renee, there's there's not many people that would have beat that out on that double play ball. There's not many players in baseball that can be safe on that. Skinnier like and all, Kyle Schwarber's not getting there. Um, Trey would get there. You know, when you literally go through it, there's not a lot of guys that actually would beat that. And so as much as you want to be frustrated because his at bats are not where people would want at this point of the opening weekend, at the end of the day, he still adds he still adds to this team, getting to first base, his center field play. So, you know, overall, he's not the only, like you mentioned, there's a lot of things from the weekend that I feel actually are more concerning than Yoro's at Oh, we'll get to those because sure. I have more nose and notes. And my cousin <laughs> my cousin was hitting me uh, with the Castellanos hot takes over oh, the fire gosh. yesterday and some <laughs> delicious Miller lights. Um, <laughs> who was it that was just saying, uh, Tyler, can you scroll up a quick second? There was a comment I wanted to talk about. Um, all ads. Everyone's talking ads. Everybody's talking ads now. I lost <laughs> it. Don't worry about it. Um, but yes, um, 
But yeah, yeah some, I guys, don't know. some guys are overperforming, some guys are underperforming. It, yeah. This happens every single year yeah, in the first exactly. series. Of the so, two season. guys I thought looked good Kyle Schwarber and uh, JT. JT. Now, we talked yeah. about JT. Uh, that home run is a home run in almost every ballpark except this one and one other. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't love him in the four hole. Um, I'm never going to kind of get over that old school baseball thing. Yeah. Uh, but he looked good to start the year. And I think Schwarber looked pretty good running on the base pass. And obviously, you know, after Albies gets the two run home run off Ranger comes back with the lead off of his own. And you kind of needed that in that moment. Like you yeah. needed some juice in that stadium. You didn't want everybody to kind of implode mentally. So yeah. I thought those two offensively looked pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody in that ballpark was miserable. Yeah. <laughs> Once it went down 2 nothing, it was like, all right, yeah. that's Great. sweet. We're down three we're games already. This team down sucks. Three games already. What are we even doing? And uh, and that's what Schwarber gives you. And I think there's good arguments on both sides for him being the leadoff guy, not the leadoff guy. That was a moment where he shows you that, you know, it can really uh, change the momentum right away, one swing. Yeah. Yeah, I saw um, something about JT, some nuggets um, on Twitter, actually, and it was when you look at his weekend, as you mentioned, he was one of the bright spots. 300 batting average, home run, an RBI, a 417 OBP. Could have been two home runs, yeah. Should have, yeah. could have. A 1017 OPS, uh, a 400 BAPIP. That's, I know you guys love that stat. Um, and then Tyler's 83. Tyler's a big BAPIP guy. He's a big BAPIP guy. BAPIP <laughs> is one of the actual <laughs> playable stats. It works. And then his exit velocity was 95 miles per hour or more on, you know, 83. 3.3% of the pitches that he saw. And so, they, I saw it was like, it might have been the third hardest hit home run ever off a of sale by a lefty. Because I think it was like 114 yeah. or 115 miles yeah, an hour third, off the maybe bat. Maybe second, I think. Yeah, it might have even been mm -hmm. second. Uh, so. so that's really good to see. And uh, Ray in the chat says, Bohm impressed me yeah. too. I don't want to leave him out. I thought he, he looked pretty good this he weekend did. too. So yeah. I think those three kind of stole the offensive um, spotlight a little bit. Yeah, the first, the first thing, the first game, uh, talking offense, and yeah, J JT's been fantastic. I think he has the best numbers on the team. Mm -hmm. We're going to defense, and boom, first first thing in the first game, you've got you've got Boom making a tremendous play. You've got Harper diving the grab a line drive. These, mm -hmm. these are not the Phillies of, of a couple of years ago where the defense was awful. Well, Trey Turner. <laughs> Trey Turner. <laughs> Trey Turner um, was not great. The play on Friday uh, was routine. Uh, and brother. the conundrum mentally with Trey Turner and his defense is, he makes a play, like Tyler said before the show, where he goes across the middle, diving, spinning throw, mm -hmm. puts it right on the money to Bohm, and problem. you're like, damn. Uh, yep. And then he botches a routine yep. play on Friday. I thought it couldn't get worse this year, uh, but starting off game one like that, I'm not going to lie, I had the the mental conversation with myself like, oh, it can actually get worse? Yeah. Hopefully, this is something he can he can write, and it's just between the yeah. ears. Again, I'm not too optimistic again, though. Again, <laughs> it's one sample size, right? <laughs> exactly. Sample size again. That's exactly. my my retort to anything that's wrong with the team right now. Sample size. We're just getting started. Watch yeah, and that that's one. yeah, exactly. Be better, Trey. But, <laughs> Be better, Trey. <laughs> but yeah, I know Kyle Schwarber, as we talked about, was definitely one that first of all he looks he looks better. I know he's been um he had been dealing with. Some, some knee puffiness last season on and off, you know, just being healthy, even though he didn't have any procedures or anything in the offseason. Um, did have some procedures, um, excuse me, did have some, it's just, just like a lifestyle change overall to uh, be skinnier and just see, because of that, a better overall weekend from him. Um, 231 batting average, a 231 OVP, slugging out of 462, at the plate looked good, moving a little bit faster. And yes, as Tyler drops and reminds us, because hypothetical man is saying we get on Tyler, but he's right sometimes. He's usually right most of the time. Uh, that Kyle Schrober's home run was the third hardest hit ball of Sunday. Kyle Schrober, as we talk about, usually starts off the season pretty slow and not just in his running speed. Um, but this he was a bright spot. Alec Bohm was a bright spot. Definitely, definitely JT. JT's, I feel like, super steady. Um, there were some moments that you can see like, okay, you know what? There's glimpses of things that are some positive takeaways and there's glimpses of things that are not good, but super fixable, especially since it's only opening weekend. Okay. So here it is also, in addition to being the third hardest hit one, uh, Kyle Schwarber's home run had an exit velocity of 114.4, the fourth Ooh. hardest of his career and hardest off of a left-handed pitcher for him. It's also the second hardest home run anyone has hit off Chris Sale 
The only other one to beat it was Aaron Judge oof, at 116.3 miles per hour. Yeah, by the way, guys, that's why you can call me a coward. You can call me weak. <laughs> if I'm out in right field, I'm not trying to catch that ball. <laughs> I'm not. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not. Unless I'm protecting, a, like, a child sitting next to me, then, yes, I'll put my okay, hand in front fair. of it. But, like, if it's just me and a bunch of adults, like, I've, I've you please go a, ahead. You go ahead and have it. I cowered out at a, uh, a foul ball once that. Look, my hand was going to break. The thing I'm, was not, I'm not sticking my hand in front of 114. Yeah, the thing was above the stadium, and it came right down at me, and I, was, I could hear it, like, whistling, yeah. and I was just like, nah. It bounced above the club I'm sorry. To, I hate to have to do this because that just reminds me. Did you guys see the video of the Easter egg drop from a helicopter? No. <laughs> Somebody not. somewhere thought it was a good idea to launch or, I'm sorry, drop. Easter eggs, several of them. Hard from, boiled, or, like to children. To the children. <laughs> That's a horrible. <laughs> from idea. a helicopter. So you think you're Coming not? Catching that? <laughs> you think you're not catching that one? Ah, uh, those four children. They're just out there with their baskets and their cute oh little God. Easter outfits. Hat. We're getting oh, no. pelted with Easter eggs from the sky. So I looked that one up. It was kind of entertaining. They just started. They're like Easter eggs, and then everyone just started <laughs> screaming when they realized. <laughs> uh, by the but way, but in the uh, chat, I want to give some love because we're getting some thoughts here. Uh, before you give your love, Jamie. Well, I was just um, going to ask you about your weenus. <laughs> Is it okay? Because I saw you doing a lot of motions I, know, I was, I was, I was. I couldn't how's, move how's the weenus? I, I heard it on Friday, guys. Okay. Uh, I was on the IL this weekend. Um, if you didn't think I was going to ask you about your weenus during the show, you don't know me very well yet. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't catch the fact that we had uh, 69 people watching. Cause Very the nice. <laughs> the inner child. Nice. Let's give some my thumbs weenus, up for 69. Am I right, guys? Fine. Um, there is some possible breaking news. I saw Jim within the chat. I was trying Dever? to give some love. Raphael Dever? Yeah, but first. Um, Did he get for, traded? No. What? Yeah, what? hold on. What? Look up Ruben Amaro while we're looking yeah, this up. On? Because this, apparently this he just guys, got fired. Dever. Guys. Let's, let's not jock Peterson this. Please Google this, Jim. It's April Fool's Day. Jimmy. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, thank you, Tyler. always doing? See, I saw Google. Come on, chat. Be better than Shampoo. Everybody get right, on Twitter anyway, today. I don't want to give you guys love anymore. You're bringing us April Fool's jokes. I'm so bad with April Fool's Day. Uh, Rainier is saying you wonder if ultimately the Phillies will swap Turner and Stott someday. Um, I know, Ray, you're also saying they are who we thought they were. Um, Jim's bringing in an April Fool's joke about Ruben Amaro just got fired. <laughs> Hypothetical man talking about Schwarber uh, starting slow because he mostly hits home runs and the ball doesn't carry yet. Good point. JK, what's up, JK? JK just chilling, um, says it took some horrible umpires, some, <laughs> some blue pits, and Aaron Bummer for the Phillies to squeak out one game. But they squeaked out one but game they it out. is the important they part of that line. <laughs> yes, they did. And then K-Red, you're saying if you break your hand, you get a few weeks off work. That's a good point, guys. Go catch that ball. Get on the IL and get a few weeks off of work, possibly. Boy, that's horrible. Although ball. you guys would still have to work. That's horrible. Ball. You saw Chris Sale <laughs> duck and cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that thing was flying. Who the oh. hell is starting Raphael Devers April? Like, that's not funny. You're just taking a random MLB play. Let's say Jack Peterson was traded to the Phillies. <laughs> Watch people react. Stupid April Fools. Shut it down. All right. A couple <laughs> other notes. Um, like thank Fools. you. Thankfully, the umpire uh, missed. One of the most egregious thrown strikes, textbook definition, middle of the plate, in between the letters and the belt, right down the pipe, and it called it a ball to Nick Castellanos. It helped win you the game. We'll take it. We'll take it. We deserve. We deserve it. You that know, part, we that do. Part. This stands out because it went our way. Yes, the team's way. I've always what? said umpires are great at their job. They're human. Occasionally, they make mistakes, and we have to be okay so with it. You, you just want to be on the right side of that mistake. Is, yeah. This is helping it even out. Even yeah. Out. They do How many times do we see umpires make mistakes that are not in favor of any of our of our teams exactly. that we're rooting for and watching? Yeah. So, I mean, it happens all the time. And so thank you. personally, I've always believed as an athlete, you don't leave it up to chance. You don't leave the game to be decided by umpires or officials. Yep. And so Braves, it's not that's not on that's not on the Phillies. Yeah, I mean, that's why on, did, how you. dare he throw a perfect strike right down right. the middle with two strikes? I mean, <laughs> right. what was that's he thinking? That's your fault. That's your um, fault, actually. But on the, on a serious <laughs> note, uh, Castellanos. Um, oof. Mm. Now look, he is as streaky as streaky. Did you gets. jinx him when you said he was going to hit a home run on Maybe, Friday, and then the rest of the weekend? There's he no was like... bigger death than Jesus, and it was Good <laughs> Friday, so I thought he was going to go yard. Uh, in all seriousness. Oh, he Lord. is as hot as hot can get, and he can be as cold as cold gets. It looks, I'm hoping, there's going to be a, a regression from last year. Because I think 
he performed pretty well last year. Mm. I think it's natural to assume a bit of a regression. I'm confident he's going to pull out of this, but his approach, like he's kind of flailing low and outside. He was, when he gets an 0-1 count on him, I just go, ah, shit. I I don't know what the fix is. He's an old dog. I don't know if you can teach him new tricks at this point. He is what he is. He's our seven hole hitter. Yeah, it's an it's expensive just, one, but not a great weekend. Feels all too familiar with that that ball low and away. That uh, right. It feels just, like Ryan Howard all over again. Yeah, yeah, Ryan Howard with the, the, the other pitch. But I mean, this is what you're going to get. We've seen it for a few years now. There's there's going to be times where he looks. It's painful to watch the at bats, and then there's going to be times where he's carrying the team for a couple of days. Yeah, and it's 10 at-bats this weekend. Uh, Lots of zeros across the stats. Did get those two RBIs, two walks, uh, three whole total bases, uh, of course, and also uh, three strikeouts. But, yeah, the most important thing is Jamie said on Friday in our pregame show he had faith that Nick Cassianos was going to hit a home run on Friday. And uh, nope, The wind was blowing not. out his direction. But <laughs> you had faith. Jesus died. But Eddie Powers is saying it's good to see you, Jamie. So there oh, you go. Thank you, Betting Power. There you go, Eddie. Um, Eddie says hi. Oh, hello. Um, but so, Scott G is also saying Bummer doesn't pass the baseball name test. No, not at all. No, he stinks. doesn't. And <laughs> Spider is, of course, reminding us not only why he enjoys our show for our Weenus and 69 content, but also because it's uh, the 13th Monday of the year, guys. Lucky number 13 is also April Fool's Day. Mm-hmm. I love that. So, uh, yeah. You know, what was, you know what wasn't April Fool's Day yesterday? My beer fridge. Because when <laughs> I had friends and family over, I said, go help yourself. There's some delicious, cold, refreshing Miller Lights in there. And when friends and family are coming by, it just kind of tastes like Miller time in the air. Yesterday was great. I had the fire pit going, the Phillies game on the TV Mm -hmm. on the deck. The kids were all running around like maniacs, hopped (laughs) up on jelly beans and Easter eggs. Uh, And friends and family were there, and we were having some delicious, cold Miller Light and having a great day. Because when friends and family get together, somehow, you know, Miller Light just tastes better. Uh, I've been telling you about it forever. It's the original light beer, uh, and a lot has changed over the years, but the cold, delicious taste of Miller Lite has not. It's the original light beer, and to this day, it's still the best one. They have more of the stuff you want, and they remove all the crap you don't need because there's only 96 calories per 12 ounces. And look, we're all trying to uh, maybe slim up a little bit for beach season. Well, I should have started that years ago. But I'm going to make the switch now in the springtime to 96 calorie Miller Lite because it tastes like a beer should. They keep it simple, undebatable quality, great taste. And it's the beer that strips away everything you don't need and holds on to what matters most. The original light beer since 1975, less filling and only 96 calories. Times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time. Miller Lite can get delivered right to your door if you go to MillerLite.com slash fills. Or you can find it pretty much any, anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories per 12 ounces. Yeah, and I, we had some uh, nice cold Miller lights down at Bet Parks for our opening day festivities. Uh, thanks for everybody that came and hung out with us. We had our pregame show. Uh, we did our watch party. We had our postgame show as well, all live down at Bet Parks in South Philly, the race and sports book. And we have many more events coming your way here at PHOI. We're just getting started. We're just getting warmed up. We're like Kyle Schwarber in the start of the season. We're just slowly getting going, but a lot faster, hopefully, than that. So our Sixers crew was down live at Deke's Barbecue on Friday. Uh, we also have more events coming up. So it's not too late to become a diehard and join the fun, whether it's in our Discord channel, obviously with our Fantasy Baseball League. We had a diehard draft that happened. Uh, shout out to all of us that one week won a Fantasy Baseball. Woo-woo! Oh, John, your John, hand's not up. Oh, no, your, your hand's not up. Everybody else's hand is up for you. He played the genius title over here. I was telling you earlier. John lost the title. He got blown out the title. Scheduled loss. Week I had like yeah. six starters <laughs> pitched out. You got out. a lot of Sunday scheduled days off. Yeah, you took the L week <laughs> one, but you guys don't have to take the L. You can uh, become a diehard member. We've got merch we give away. We've got events that you can get a discount to. We've got a lot of great things coming up this season. Tailgates, fun watch parties, and uh, in-person events. And so join the fun. Become a, you know, a part of the PHOI family. And be a diehard. All right, in the chat, I'm seeing some love. We uh, gotta give Eddie Powers first. a love. I know. I, was, I gotta get ten dollars. <laughs> Let me set that up because it's about you. Oh yeah. So you don't want to like too. Oh yeah, that's weird. By I was actually going to talk about the other comments. Well, let's ahead. give the sh- super chat some love super because chat. that gets uh, that gets you right to the front of the line, <laughs> Eddie. 
Uh, thank you for the ten dollars. And he says, Renee, you have a beautiful smile. Thank you. So there you thank go, a little you. Monday uh, oh, that positivity makes me feel so great. there. I'm, I'm gonna give that I see a my friends up. in the chat here: thank Donnie, Jimmy, Poor Richmond stand up. What, what about my smile? <laughs> <laughs> can I get can I get two dollars? Shout out to Poor Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, Eddie. I appreciate that. Nice to have you here. Appreciate the compliment. Um, also, I'm seeing you know they were giving you some kudos for your transition. Sean, you jumped in. You said you're jumping in late, but nice to have. Better late than never. Nice to have you Welcome here. In, Sean. Even if you are uh, disagreeing about Marsh and Stott, you're saying they should be 90% everyday players. They've both proven that they can hit lefties, especially Stott. He should be in there. Yeah, no, agreed. I think Marsh him a hasn't proven that, but, but I think Stott, Stott has. has definitely proven and should be. But Chris um, Sale's nasty. Like of all the left handers, like he's one of the ones where you go, all right. I, I get Chris Sale off day. But you know what? Abbott tonight, get in there, boys. At yeah. least at Citizens Bank Park, they know how to properly put down any necessary markings, lines, whatever, because Jason Coletti, yes, you are correct. We saw in the Elite Eight for the women's game, uh, NC State, Texas, the lines for the three-point line were wrong. Somebody got fired immediately. I'm sure there was uh, an effective immediately. Somebody definitely got let go for that one. Yeah, Jim Detver says you have an ugly smile. I don't know, John, <laughs> if that's in reference to you or me. Oh, or uh, me, technically. It's, it's, me. it's you. It's he doesn't should like we, your smile. You're, all, you're a good friend. <laughs> Tyler, you know? let's zoom in on them. Let's get our smiles. <laughs> 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 all right. So the if you're in the area, you know it's a pretty crappy day out. It's been raining overnight all day. So the rain, rain is supposed to stop at 1 o'clock today. So the game tonight shouldn't be a problem to get in. John, you'll be down there. We get to see Christopher Sanchez. For the first time this year, uh, left-handed pitcher versus left-handed pitcher, Andrew Abbott. I would expect Stott and Marsh and Harper are all back in the lineup tonight. Uh, he's not Chris Sale, uh, but we do get our eyes on Chris Sanchez tonight. Yeah, I'm really excited about Chris Sanchez. I mean, he's flown under the, under the radar here for a year or two while, while performing very mm -hmm. well. The, most, the thing I'm most interested in seeing is will they let him go past five innings? If his pitch count is reasonable, Will, will you sort of take the training wheels off and let Christopher Sanchez see if he can be something more than what he's been? And what he's been has been fantastic as a number five starter. Uh, he's your number four right now. Um, but will, will you let him go? Will you let him see what he can do? And as you said, Jamie, I would expect all those lefties to be back in the lineup tonight. Okay, take a breather against Chris Sale. Right. Yeah, Andrew um, Abbott, go get him, boys. Yeah, go, go, go get him. The only Abbott we like in this city is Abbott Elementary School. That is a very good <laughs> show. Um, but such a great show. <laughs> Andrew Abbott last year with a 3.87 ERA and his 8.6 uh, record for the season, 120 strikeouts. You're going down, Andrew Abbott. And that also does not pass the name test, by the way. Or he doesn't really give, not really. He doesn't really give me, you know, He's, his, his picture doesn't give me much And Jason like, Coletti, yes, I agree with you. He's not Chris Sale of 13.9 Ks per nine. No. Uh, but so he, he, but Sanchez, he is still a, a deceiving lefty delivery that's left-handed batters have said he's a son of a bitch to pick up. Uh, you know the ball, well, and Tyler. The, the, you you love Chris. The Sale thing when he's with healthy. his slider too is it plays off both sides of the plate. Like yeah. I, I I don't know if you guys noticed it, but there was a couple of times he buried it off the back foot of a right-handed hitter, and they were just like flailing at it. Yeah, it's still an extremely effective. He's pitch. nasty. His health has been the yeah. Issue. I mean, and he's throwing hard enough. Like it's not like he's was at 97, 98. Now he's at ninety two. He's still ninety five. You know, yeah. he pumped. I think he pumped ninety seven once. Uh, during the during the course of his five-plus innings. If he gets, uh, ends up being healthy all year and becomes a gem for incredible them, acquisition. Alex Anthopoulos will become a war criminal and deserves the gulag. But, yeah, I think mm -hmm. that, that, that just because, like, he's filthy against lefties, that slider plays against righties, yeah, too. Yeah, it's nasty. Yeah. Uh, so the rest of the series, tomorrow we'll have Graham Ashcraft versus Spencer Turnbull. Uh, I feel like a real sicko, but I'm mildly excited to see Turnbull. I thought in his last start in spring, John, he looked pretty good. He was He was kind of throwing some gas. He's a big, intimidating guy. Uh, he's got a really good opportunity here to kind of resurrect his career. Yeah, opportunity's knocking for Spencer Turnbull. So let's uh, let's see what he's got. I mean, this is a guy. He has he has stuff. He has talent. He's got a, a, a no hitter on his resume. I mean, this isn't some nobody. Yeah, I think uh, the the encouraging thing is, you know, Aaron Nola, even though he had a fresh <coughs> a. a, a a bad start. We'll just call it for what it was. We know what to expect from him for the most part. Zach Miller, we definitely know what to expect from him. 
But with somebody like even Christopher Sanchez, as you mentioned, this is our chance to see, okay, what does Christopher Sanchez look like with a full season? Uh, he's been working a lot on his on his on some minor moves, his control, his, you know, really being able to use his frame and how he's delivering his pitches. What does he look like getting, you know, the start from the beginning of the season? Spencer Turnbull is another one because, as we all know, Taiwan Walker being injured is the reason Spencer Turnbull gets that opportunity. Clearly, uh, not everybody's a big fan of Taiwan Walker. And so it is also a chance to see this is why you were brought in, Spencer Turnbull. Let's see what you can add as that number five guy um, to round out the rotation. If you if we can get something from you. Like, I think there's just no expectations there, to be honest. Yeah. So it just leaves you optimistic the of, like, whatever Mick he Abel, does. Hopefully. Right. Worst case, he's awful. And that's fine. You've got Mick Abel. You've got still got Taiwan Walker when he gets healthy. If he does great. Even better. So I know in the chat, you guys are saying, like, Christopher O'Donnell, you're mentioning you're not worried about the pitching. Uh, you're not even worried about the bats. You're just worried about uh, the slow start. And so as you guys are mentioning, like, yeah, the, the pitching is something that we, we've talked about as a strength of this group that we can consistently rely on. It's some of those around the edges pieces, as we always uh, And then Wednesday, uh, getaway day, business person special. We'll be doing a post-game show yes. that day here. Uh, immediately after the game, you get Frankie Montez, who is, uh, or Montes, uh, is one of the sneakier, just very solid pitchers around baseball. He's going to be going against Zach Wheeler, uh, and then the Phillies are going to head down to D.C. to take on the Nationals after that. Uh, so, the last of the Phillies news and notes, uh, the City Connect uniforms. Oh, how do coming- we not lead with this? Because they're gross. I I really... Sarcasm. sarcasm, They feel like a Wildwood Boardwalk, like, (laughs) uh, knockoff jersey. Yeah. So the City Connects are Friday. Friday they're getting officially announced. Announced. There's like a party release. Oh, oh. There's not just a party, guys. Fans are... Fans are... Fans. Fans are invited for a free Phillies block party. A whole six-hour party down at Citizens Bank Way where you get to... Ring in the City Connect jerseys. Have some. I'm putting the, all the spin on this. You're gonna go. You, spe- you're close. There's festivities. <laughs> um, there's a lot. There's gonna be some special guests. There's gonna be some fun. I think we should all go. Let's I, go it have some fun. It appears it's the blue one with the yellow <laughs> kind of uh, yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, I'm going to. Throw, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm throwing my my Brian Westbrook blue and yellow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your yellow jackets jerseys. They will actually I, have, I uh, really have our buddy one. LA is going to be there. Shane Victorino, Mill Thompson. They got a whole you know list of some strong guests, and they're going to bring in the new era of. Philly Ooh. Connect jerseys at the new era Phillies team store. I hope it's something different, but it won't be. No. Uh, so we have that to look forward to on Friday. All right, before we get out of here, I want to go around <laughs> Major League Baseball. There was three stories uh, that are kind of the main talking points after MLB's opening weekend, uh, and then we'll get out of here giving some love to some local businesses and, and a special kid. Uh, but Major League Baseball, uh, Juan Soto and the New York Yankees start undefeated sweeping the Astros a team they struggle to play in Minute Maid Park uh, and Juan Soto we'll talk about Mookie Betts in a second but Juan Soto somehow might have been the best performer of the weekend he's throwing outfield assists he's hitting mm. moon shots he's looking swaggy while doing it we all kind of like or at least me I should say I don't know about all I I my hot take was the Yankees weren't going to make the playoffs um, and there's still a lot of season to go here. Really. Let's not get all cocky here from one opening weekend. Uh, they still have a pretty dog shit rotation. They have to get through a year with, but Juan Soto. Wow. I'll let, I'll let John go first because I don't yeah. want to toot my own horn too fast. It is only opening weekend. No, it's, it's amazing when, <laughs> when he's on, when a superstar changes teams, goes to the, to the bright lights of the Yankees and just, performs immediately it's fun it's just fun it's good for baseball you know of course i hate the yankees but it's it's fun and it's good for baseball when they're good yeah it's fun when they have stars like soto yeah Yeah. i mean i was the one outlier of the three of us since john was not here that actually thought the yankees should win the division and i had them falling in the playoffs but i also remember if you remember i had juan soto as my favorite to win mvp because when you are a really good player that's been on a me, you know a mediocre middle of the pack team, and you now get a chance to take a new step, go somewhere fresh, start a new chapter, especially as you talk about the Yankees are good for baseball. Let's be honest. Um, that in itself can help carry you to play at a whole different level. Look at Corbin Burns day one with the Orioles, the way that he came out pitching, setting records with those eleven strikeouts. When you have like that fresh taste and also being on a, a team that's a championship caliber team, and the fact that the Yankees. 
with Garrett Cole healthy, of course, are a World Series caliber team, I think we're going to get an elevated Juan Soto. Now, it is only opening weekend. I'm not going to toot my own horn Well, they're giving out MVPs. It's Juan Soto in the AL (laughs) and Mookie Betts in the NL. That was my AL and NL predictions, actually. Um, Looking pretty good. Looking good. Looking pretty chalky is what it is. (laughs) I I went with the long shots of Julio Rodriguez and Fernando Tatis. Uh, But Mookie Betts, holy jeez. This guy is a freak. Hmm. So he had home runs in four straight games, the last game in Korea, and then three straight games here. Entering yesterday's game, after five games, Mookie Betts' war was already at one. Hmm. This dude, you can put him at shortstop, second base, right field, center field. It doesn't matter. He's the best player in baseball. This dude isn't absolute freak to be as little and tiny as he it's it reminds me of like rory mcelroy leading the pga in drive distance <laughs> it's like that dude's little he's not supposed to be able to do that right. and mookie betts just continues to make your jaw drop just a beast and it's a it's a reminder that you know not only do the phillies have to deal with atlanta you got the dodgers out there too the whole nl west it's yeah it's, <laughs> yeah the whole nl west, whole I mean, NL there's west a, for the a most lot part. of good teams and this isn't going to be a year where you really squeak into the playoffs and maybe get some luck like you want to you want to be one of the real contenders. Yeah, you want to have a fun summer. You're going to have to play well. Yeah, and God, that's a reminder when you see what these. Guys I are don't in. know why you guys know. let me play fantasy baseball because yeah, I just you took find Mookie myself- Betts. You're so amazing. <laughs> everybody, everybody, loud Renee took Mookie Betts. Everyone. <laughs> No, but it's worse than that because I have become that person on Twitter that anytime, anytime one of my players on my fantasy team even sniff in the right direction, I'm like, oh, that's my guy. That's my catcher. That's my second baseman. That's my You were the only one team. who believed in him. <laughs> it was only me. <laughs> only I'm the only yeah, it was, one. It was just you. Sarcasm right. again. I'm the only one that thought Mookie Betts was going to have a stellar season. Uh, Hot he, take. He did help my fantasy team roll through week one, uh, but it is remarkable to see. He's such a uh, superstar. He's really freak fun athlete, to watch play. And the ability to just play any position, help in any way possible, and just, like, these plays, the stats. The, all right, Tyler, here's some porn for you. By the way, I can't believe Mookie Betts fell all the way to four. I know. That's just how did, that, how did the rest of the league let She's that happen? She's the only happen? one that believed Crazy. Him, I know. Here, here's some Mookie Betts <laughs> stat porn for our own Tyler, who loves Mookie Betts. I do. Um, it's true. Since I RBIs became official, and this was going into Sunday, I think he went over actually yesterday and was human. Uh, but since RBIs became official in 1920, two major league players have had a four game span with nine plus hits, nine plus RBIs, mm. six plus walks, four plus home runs, and a 600 mm. plus batting average. Oh one God. is Mookie Betts over the oh. last four games. Uh, the other one was this guy named George Herman Ruth uh, in 1932. Yeah, I heard of him. He was okay. <laughs> wow. wow. So Moogie Betts, quite good. The other storyline for Major League Baseball this weekend that jumped out at me and uh, all of Twitter, Reese Hoskins, always a Philly. Oh, my God. I love this that. This was that. awesome. He's blank the Mets. Uh, <laughs> was it a late slide? Yeah, it was a late slide. But it was within the rules. It was a good, hard baseball play. Jeff McNeil's a bitch. And he Jeff called McNeil's him out. Jeff McNeil's on my fantasy baseball well, team. He's Hold a on bitch. now. <laughs> uh, and Reese doing the wah, wah, wah. Not my team. and then the next day coming up, he's getting booed and he sends a two RBI single down the line, <laughs> takes some yard later. Awesome to see. It was so great. It was fun. It reminded me of when, uh, when the Mets threw at him and then he hit the home run. Yeah, and the, and the, the slow drop. Slow drop. <laughs> it was the same guy, man. He's, I miss he's off to a hot start. Oh, yeah. I'm over it. I'm over it. Sure. But also... I miss Reese very much. Yeah. I, can't, fun play. I can't trash talk my second baseman, but it was definitely a weak move. And I, again, <laughs> like I said in our Friday show, I always love when they say, like, the dugouts are clearing, guys are swarming the field to fight, and you watch, and it's like they're in slow motion yeah, because yeah, everybody's coming out. from so far away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the slowest fight ever, and yeah. then they finally get close. They're out what of breath. What was everybody doing? They're like, out of breath, and they finally yeah. get face-to-face. Like, <gasps> okay, wait a minute. I just had to run for the bullpen. Talk, talk <laughs> I will say about? this, though, about Reese. He, he did get a little tough from the dugout. McNeil was standing over him, kind of pointing and cursing yeah. at him, and he just walked away yeah. kind of playing dumb. Like, He's bringing that Philly energy to Milwaukee. Could have squared up right it. there like Jose Ramirez. And, and then he like, uh, it was, was such it? a slow escalation. Yeah, to and then he started tough talking from the dugout. I was like, all right, you like, had your why opportunity. Why didn't you do it? When you were, I would love to see a nice yeah. face-to-face uh, right there. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I will throw Lean it into I, it. I, I think he didn't quite know what was going on. <laughs> 
Maybe he and did he look like a little confused. Oh, yeah, but McNeil was in his face like yeah, yeah. as soon as it happened. So you know, uh, but good to see Reese thriving. That was, it was uh, he'll a be great back moment. here in two years when Kyle Schwarber leaves as the team's <laughs> DH, and we'll all be happy. Um, all right, as we're getting out of here, uh, Renee, I saw you throw this in Slack. Oh uh, yeah, I saw it as well, and it was absolutely awesome. Uh, now, the name isn't here in the tweet. Do you have the name of the young boy? Sam. Sam. Mm -hmm. uh, Major League Baseball tweeted this out. The Phillies tweeted it out. If you haven't seen it yet, it's awesome. Uh, a young boy named Sam, who was a survivor of brain cancer, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, was selling lemonade, uh, trying to raise money for opening day tickets. A guy, uh, probably a Major League Baseball employee, comes up to him and says, uh, basically, can I buy your whole pitcher? How much would that cost? I think Sam was like $20 uh, and the guy was like, well, how much money do you need to, to, you know, generate here to get opening day tickets? He's like, well, they're pretty expensive. A couple hundred dollars. The guy busts out like $2,000 in cash mm -hmm. and says, uh, how about I give you this and some opening day tickets and you get to go on the field and meet the teams. Uh, really, really cool. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it, uh, but they took Sam down on the field he got to high five all the players on opening day wearing his fanatic hat and the look on his face was just like that's why sports are it was beautiful. beautiful it was incredible yeah. that's what it's all about right exactly <laughs> and the guy uh known as md motivator he actually this is what his whole like okay um you know brand is where he goes around and finds people that are deserving and have had you know whether it's trauma or just different adversity that they've overcome and provide you know gives them money and then you know, they go again, have these one of a kind experiences, usually around sports, but something similar. I'm sure the um, leagues are helping yeah, them out. And so the league yeah. exactly helps connect with MD Motivator, make this happen for Sam. And it's it was awesome. so it was so great to see. I mean, listen, to be so young and have to fight brain cancer. I yeah. mean, he had the scar on the back of his head from his uh, surge from, you know, a surgery that he had. And we take for granted as frustrated as we get sometimes with sports, like how lucky we really are at times to not have to worry about some of these major, major life challenges. Yeah, so DFP says Sam fuck cancer. That. Yeah, I'm glad Sam got that moment. And it's like I'm the sure one thing we remember it. everybody can agree on. It's like the one universal thing where everybody's just like F cancer. Oh, yeah. Uh, so oh, yeah. a really cool moment for Sam. And the Phillies players, uh, yeah. you know, I'm sure they were instructed of who he mm -hmm. was because they were all awesome, yeah. giving him high fives and hugs and, and a day he'll and never forget. And that's the thing that makes it even better. It's not just here's some <coughs> tickets, go watch. You know, I love when teams like the Phillies did embrace him yeah, and make him feel like, welcome, you're part of us. You know, we're, we're including you're not just standing off the side for a PR publicity stunt. No, we want to actually give this, you know, give you this opportunity. You've worked so hard to show you that you're special and that yeah. we want to reward you. So I love I awesome. seeing that. Pretty awesome. If you haven't seen it, you can check out MLB's tweet or the Phillies tweeted it, I believe, as well. Yes. All right, as we're getting out of here, I want to give a shout out to a local pizza place. Uh, <gasps> because if you're unfamiliar with out-of-town catering uh, at Citizens Bank Park, usually the traveling secretary, the George Costanza of the out-of-town team, uh, will arrange in town uh, I know Mike's Barbecue down in South Philly, but my old place does it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I think Angelo's has done it. You know, a, a lot of great restaurants in town have done it. Well, a little hat tip to our friends, and Tyler has the picture to back it up, from our friends at Square Pie in South Philly. Renee, this is down in your neck of the woods in South <laughs> Philly. Uh, I haven't had it yet, but I've been told great square pizzas. Well, they got the Braves account on one of the games for the post-game meal, and they sent in... Uh, that and if you can't read the image it is awesome so they said basically they wrote on the inside of the pizza boxes let me pull it up here myself dear Atlanta thank you so much for check choosing us uh, and we're honored and would love for you to have square pie anytime but you are still in South Philly <laughs> so and they put in the Bryce Harper Orlando Arcia <laughs> stare down moment pretty cool I got to give a love shout out to Square Pie. That's, That's good great. work by them. <laughs> it is. Listen, when the Braves order pizza from you or any team orders pizza from you, you got to That's a great, easy marketing hack. Yeah, like, you're a small business owner. You're a small you're, business. Of course, you're not going to say you no. You just had the, the Atlanta Braves of all. There's so many pizza spots in Philly. I was just talking about this the other day. Like there's food spots in general in Philly. There's so many. And they chose you. So I love that. Like they leaned into it, but still kept true to like. Okay, but yeah, just great. remember you are Good in little South Philly. Dig. Yeah. Like, a little bit. They yeah. did it the right way. They didn't poison them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're not, the Braves aren't going to have diarrhea all week. Right, right, yeah. right. Here's right. our delicious pizza, yeah, but I got to take a dig. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so shout out to Square Pie. That's a great move by you guys. Um, so that wraps it up for us here today. 
Uh, Phillies back in action tonight. Uh, Andrew Abbott versus Christopher Sanchez. The Phillies are a decent favorite, minus 157. So hopefully they can go get to 500. Hopefully the bats wake up. Any big uh, predictions for tonight? Last year, it was against Cincinnati that the Phillies were able to get back in the win column. They had got swept by the Rangers. They went and dropped the series to the Yankees. Returning back home for the, versus the Reds, that was the home opening weekend. Of course, that also got pushed back a day, game one. They, uh, you know, they, I think it's going to be like last year. I mean, last year was like a 5-2 win in that first game. I think this is going to be a grind-out game, but by the end of it, I'm, I'm giving a full and detailed prediction. I think as the game progresses, the Phillies are going to really open things up. Um, and it's going to be like a, you know, eight, nine run scored game right. by the Phillies. So like Renee says two. take the over tonight. It's like a nine to two win. All right. And yeah. John, you'll be down there, obviously, writing recaps on the game. Absolutely. Uh, you feeling good about tonight? Feeling good. I mean, you know, I, I think going from the Braves to the Reds, you should you should feel good about the team being ready. Yeah, Reds are young and play. exciting, but not quite young there yet. They're, they're not the Braves. And you know what? I mean, honestly, they they better, the Phillies better take care of the Reds. Nationals, mm -hmm. Pirates, I think they have coming up. If they're anything like the Phillies of the past, they struggle versus teams you expect them to beat, <laughs> yeah. and they usually step up versus teams you don't expect yeah. them to. So we don't know. We'll see yeah. what this year's Phillies team is. Uh, but thanks, to everybody, for hopping in and joining us. Make sure you're following John on Twitter. He is our full-time beat guy. He's going to be there every day reporting for service this year. Uh, so make sure you're checking out his Sergeant reading. Sergeant Foley on the on, job. Yeah, Sergeant Foley. He'll come arrest your ass if you don't read allphly.com. <laughs> uh, but for Tyler Zuli, Renee Washington, John Foley, I'm Jamie Lynch. Have a great Monday, everyone. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. We all silly like the mayor.